Mark and Teresa from Out Office Camping, and I'm with this really cool, small, custom-built teardrop camper on a uh, 5x8. Now, we're waiting for Jeff. I don't know where he is. He's like out and about. I don't, I don't, I don't, oh, wait, here he comes right now. Hold on, let's get him. Hey, hey, Jeff. I'm glad you can make it, man. I was, we're, 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 everybody's wondering where you, when you're gonna show up. Yeah. So tell me, what do we got going on here? Oh, we got a 5x8 DIY teardrop trailer that I built. Awesome. Can you, uh, we're outside here, obviously. I love to see everything you've done. So, yeah. so it's basically framed up, uh, two by three, uh, framing on the outside. Um, I use zip sheathing on the bottom side of the camper, as well as at the bottom section here. And just regular plywood up wrapped with metal roofing. We've got metal roofing on top. Um, it's just a Lowe's trailer. Uh, I actually used it for lawn care for a number of years and wasn't using it anymore, so I decided to repurpose it uh, to build a teardrop trailer. I actually saw one along the road and thought it was pretty cool and started uh, getting into researching what other people were doing in DIY camper builds and um, just started to come up with my own plans and this is kind of what I came up with. So. Now I have to ask before we get too far into this, and most viewers would not notice this, but I noticed it because I have the same trailer. Did you switch the axle around? I did. In fact, uh, when I first built it, uh, the axle was um, a little higher, so I didn't. It wasn't swapped quite yet. But I actually noticed on the other side that my uh, my tire was actually hitting my fenders. Uh, and that's the solution I came up with to give it a little bit more travel was to swap the axle on the bottom side. And the reason it was hitting the tire was because the, the fender is actually welded further back uh, than, than this side. This side's pretty good, but the other side, um, the fender wasn't perfectly centered. So flipping that axle gave me enough travel that my tire wasn't hitting. Plus it fender. gives you, since you have the uh, Toyota Tacoma gives you a lot more off-road, you know, ability with clearance, which is really That's nice to also, see. I haven't taken this off-road uh, or any serious like uh, trailer trails or anything, but um, that could be uh, an option. I think I actually got the inspiration from this from a couple that, that built these. Uh, I forget. I think they're out in Colorado, maybe. Continue to tell us what you know with more your construction here. What what else you have going on? The windows and. I see you have AC. Just standard windows that you would buy at like Lowe's. Um, I think they're called Project Source. They're not anything real expensive. Um, it's got, it is insulated. The floor is insulated. The walls are insulated. And the ceiling is all insulated. Um, this back door here is kind of a work in progress. Uh, I would like to change uh, some things on the back door. Um, but my original kind of idea for this teardrop was to be able to um, also put a motorcycle in it so you'll see that later on some of the things I've done for that but this door um, opens the whole way we actually build it you can see for our dog Daisy. wow surprise hey Daisy she likes to stay just under where we stay and I'll put her on the thing here so we've kind of built this in a way that it was going to be able to accommodate our dog underneath here and as well maybe a little bit more storage as well um, we got a bench on the right side here and the back section that makes up our bedding platform can actually uh, be put into a table so that back corner there uh, by the ac can be a little sitting area um, if you wanted to sit down and eat and stay out of the elements or whatever is that what I see there's a there's a cone. Is that for a pole? Yeah. You have so back up in there. We have a pole that's stored in our bench. Okay. And that can um, be attached to the floor as well as that little um, part you see there. And so is that? It looks like you have three sheets of uh, maybe one inch plywood. Is that what? You, they're pe Yeah. This is three quarter inch uh, oak. Okay. Near plywood. That's what the. Um, the bench and our platforms and these there's two sections here um, that actually come out and slide into the bench here so they're kind of concealed away if you wanted to um, pull a motorcycle in here there's even tie downs there on the all floor. right yep up by the dog um, toys excellent yeah right so 
Uh, I haven't yet tried that, but it's just always been an idea to make this kind of like a teardrop slash toy hauler, if you will. Right, yeah, uh, multi-purpose. I, I really never saw anything else like that. And uh, so we pull up the bicycles in here now, but uh, someday I'd like to get a little motorcycle, maybe a Honda Grom or something, and we can pull that in here and take that along for the ride as well. So it's in the bed mode right now, which is a, a full-size bed. Uh, it's just a uh, inflatable air mattress. Um, well, that makes it really easy, just weight-wise. Right. Um, and then what do you have with the ceiling? So this is just some uh, cedar uh, planks that we put in for the ceiling. The walls are constructed out of just Lawan, which is just, uh, I think it's probably quarter-inch plywood. And then we just sealed up the cracks with some caulking and painted over it. Um, so yeah, the we've got foam up here, insulate the roof. We got some LED lights. Um, we have 75 watts of solar on the roof and a deep cell or deep cycle battery, marine battery, and we have it wired so. There's two separate circuits, one for the lights and one for the air conditioner. Um, in this case, we're running the uh, air conditioner uh, with it plugged in, but if we ever wanted to run the lights without it plugged in, we can run it off that deep cycle battery or charge our phones. Right. Um, or even my one wheel little scooter if we wanted to, which is nice. Well, it's really cool, the colors. I really like how you've, you know, you've kind of done like a cream on the walls and you have the, the framed out you know, windows and then also the ceiling, it feels very much like a cottage. And then the LED lights coming down really give it a really nice, it just makes it feel very spacious actually. Well, it's just amazing how much room is in there with that ceiling and stuff. So one of the tips uh, that I learned when I was building this that I actually used is using lighter <coughs> color walls and darker floor and ceilings makes the space feel a little bigger. So even though we have such a small amount of square footage uh, to work with, that's a little tip that you can use to make it feel a little bit more open. And what did you do with the uh, floors? Is that just a vinyl flooring yeah, or? It's just a snap-in engineered um, flooring you would see in most modern homes nowadays. Uh, what's really cool about this project is the reason I wanted to build my own teardrop trailer is because obviously the cost of some of the ones you would buy from like an RV lot uh, are very expensive. They were out of my budget. And you know, I, I just thought to myself, I could build something uh, with with cheap materials that I could find at discount places. So the flooring came from a discount uh, store, so I bought that very uh, fairly cheaply. Um, a lot of the lumber that I used to build this was just stuff I had sitting around. I work in construction. Uh, my father also works in construction, so we uh, were recycling the materials that were torn out of old jobs. Uh, to actually make this. I would say the framing, I think 100% of the framing is recycled. We, I had to buy the plywood uh, for the project, but all the framing uh, was all recycled wood, which is really cool. Um, and of course, I had to buy the, the metal roofing, but um, I, I really learned while I was building this to become resourceful and to try to find things that were cheap and inexpensive or things I already had. So uh, that was kind of like, this cedar was another uh, project that we were building a, a, a cedar entry for a home and it was scrap left over that I just cut down and planed and that's why our windows are trimmed out in the nice cedar. Uh, so Now with your um, AC unit, what is this a regular house unit? Yeah, in fact that was another way I, I actually found that uh, someone was going to throw it away. It was a little dirty. I cleaned it up and uh, it's just a 5,000 BTU home air conditioner that, uh, that, that I found. So, um, yep, that's the story with that. So, most of the, uh, most of the stuff you've repurposed or recycled from you know, other projects um, do you have a sense, did you have a budget when you went into this or you just kind of said, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and build this and, and then do you have any sense of maybe what you have into it? I don't have a good number to tell you what 
it cost me, it was a project that took me uh, about two years to get it to where um, you see it now. My first year I built the, the frame of it, sheathed the outside, and you could actually still see the framing on the inside, but we used it uh, to stay a few times. The virus came, Right. we had some time off work, and um, that's when I kind of completed the interior and, um, and finished it to what you see it is now. So it took me about two years, just time, time that I had on my hands to, to work at work way at it. So that's great. One thing that we were talking earlier when you were, when you were at one wheel is that you guys have used it a lot when you've gone over to friends places or when you just decide you might want to stay the night or something like that. So it sounds like it's really come in handy, not just for camping, but just, uh, you know, to, go visit you know friends and family sure you know if you're um, it's nice if you can haul it with you um, just to, even for a night it's nice to stay in my dad's got a camper or I'm sorry a, a cabin but it's only a basically a one bedroom so I'll take it down there and we'll stay in it a night down there and it's kind of nice to have your own space rather than you know laying on the floor pitching a tent so right yeah it does become convenient in a way. now have you weighed this at all you know, I get that question a lot, and I I don't know what it weighs. Um, I can tell you, it tows nicely behind a Tacoma, which is just a mid-sized truck. But um, well, I know the trailer's rated for 1,000 because I have the same trailer, and that's with the tailgate, which is probably at least 100 or so pounds. So you've removed that, so that's added some, you know, uh, allowed you to have some more weight, and you used a lot of really uh, simple materials that aren't bulky, so. I, you have a, a guess, guesstimate? Well, I think the trailer, correct me if I'm wrong, it's around 300 pounds, right? I, I believe you're correct, yes. The, yeah, so the dry weight of the trailer is 300 pounds. I don't know, there's probably at least 300 in materials, so maybe a little over 600 pounds. Yeah, six, six to 800 pounds, the AC unit. Right. The AC unit's probably 45 pounds, right? Well, maybe less. A little less, that's a pretty lightweight unit, but... Um, you know, load it up and say with a motorcycle, a small motorcycle, probably be right around that thousand, you know. Now on this side, I noticed you didn't do a window. Was there any specific reason for that? Well, because of the bench seat was on this side. Oh, um, right. Yes. If you're ever sitting on that side, um, your back would be to the window. So uh, it actually is framed in for a window. So when I framed it up, I did frame a window uh, over here. Uh, I suppose it could be added at a later time, but it's really haven't seen the need with the two windows well do yeah that. I mean with that back opening the way it is I'm sure you can get like a re really nice bug screen that allows you just to keep that door open almost all the time if it was cool out right. yeah. and then the electrical setup that you did you just have all your wiring behind your panels I mean I see you have your your junction box here for for I guess your AC plugs into that or right. so this is just an exterior junction box that I picked up uh, just actually it's like an outlet cover for an exterior box that's where we plug in our uh, our hookup electric and just brings it inside there and all of our electrical stuff is concealed there in that bench in this top corner is where our deep cycle battery is our solar charge controller and our inverter um, so it's all concealed in that area right there at the front of the bench uh, like I said you could switch it between the two circuits, whether we want to run everything off of battery, say we want to use our outlets to charge our phones off the of battery, we could hook that all to our uh, inverter. In this case, we have it ran off the uh, campground electric um, because our inverter and our battery couldn't run our AC uh, for very long. Right. Um, well, this is definitely a great walk around with the trailer. I think for the most part, you've covered almost all the bases. Um, you know, if our viewers want to stay, I think it would be really valuable to show us some of your other systems that you're using outside. Um, do you have sure. time to show us that? Not a like, problem. I'll start over here. I know you mentioned. Yeah, let's check. I saw that beautiful slide out. So, you know, you have the t Tacoma. Right. And uh, you've got a cover here. That I actually built this uh, to use uh, for work. I slide all my tools in the back here uh, for construction. So this cover on, it's nice. I can just roll this out. If I need something in the back, right back in here, I roll it out and I can grab it. Uh, it's obviously also came in handy for camping as well. Um, 
what I do also like is that when you roll this out, the way I built this bed slide um, is that it, it sticks out a little further. So if I wanted to set it, this up in such a way that I didn't have a table, I could roll out my stove and cook here or um, just have an area to work if I needed to. So that's also a nice benefit of building something like this. Now, do you have your... Uh your hard lumber is that bolted in the, like for the tracks on the sides how do you have how you have everything in here like attached so that this sheet can slide i see you have roller wheels but how do you have these components how are they attached so the way those are attached are through the uh, truck bed okay and i have two bolts right here in the, in the fenders that bolt those rails on both sides okay just to this bed and this is a composite bed um, that's what the Tacomas have nice um, but you could easily do that with a metal bed as well I actually got the idea from another co-worker of mine uh, that had built his own bed slide and I thought you know that's pretty neat yeah the roller wheels uh, I was looking at that for one of our slide outs and just a very simple solution and you can get golly a bunch of wheels for next to nothing yeah, I mean, the wheels were fairly inexpensive. I mean, the sheet of plywood cost more than anything. Right. <laughs> yeah, nowadays it seems that way. But yeah, so um, that's a great that's a great slide out for the whole back of the bed. And what about your, um, you know, I noticed you have the, uh, you guys have the hammock and the easy up and stuff like that, the cooktop. Can you show us some of the other systems that you have? Sure. Excellent. So we always bring our camping stove and also we like to grill a lot, so I brought a grill. Um, one thing that's pretty cool that we've got a lot of value out of is a little Bluetooth uh, speaker. Uh, it's it's charges via solar, uh, and you can charge your phone from it. You can also charge it uh, from the wall outlet. Uh, it's got a light and a little red SOS light as well. Uh, we like listening to music, so that's definitely something we always like to bring, and we really enjoy. This is by uh, Reno G. I yeah, I saw it had the Renogy. Had you know, I didn't know if they were the ones that made the solar panel and it was somebody else or what. But that's a Renogy radio. Yeah, that's that's really it's just amazing what's out there. Yeah, and that's it's really great sound. And uh, we have another one of these that we just set outside, and it always just charges off of solar. Uh, we've never charged it in like a year. So. So you have your Coleman propane stove, and then you have uh, your Renogy uh, stereo system, your yep. flexible water. Then your uh, collapsible dish sinks. Yep, this one's kind of collapsed. With a uh, <laughs> with a, looks like a bamboo uh, cutting board and yep, cast one. iron. Now, uh, for water, we use this. This is called a rinse kit. Yeah, the rinse kits. Yes. Um, I bought this at a discount rate uh, from a, a wholesaler, so I didn't buy it from Rinse Kit. Uh, it's been pretty good to us. The hose leaks a little bit, as you might be able to see. <laughs> right. But uh, and also the the tank actually cracked on us we actually had to pull the tank out and, and fix it so um, like I said I bought it from a wholesaler discount but it still works all right it holds a, a water charge and we get a lot of value out of it it's great for doing dishes and uh, and if you ever need to rinse off your feet or anything being at the beach you know your feet get sandy and stuff definitely comes in handy for things like that as well and then this is a traditional grill yep which I heard was a, a roadside rescue it sure was. I found this. I live in a college town, and when the college kids move out, they just throw things along the road, whether they can't take it home or what it is. But um, we ended up picking this up sitting along the road. We cleaned it up, and uh, we've gotten a lot of use out of it as well. We That's like awesome. camping. And then cooler system, you're just using traditional ice coolers? Yep. We just have an igloo cooler over here and a Coleman cooler over there, one for drinks, one for food. Um, it's easy up. I got from a friend. Uh, Shout out to Mac if you're watching this. He actually hooked me up with this. This is the second year uh, we've been using it, and it's been great. It's just a Ozark Trail easy up. So thank yeah. you, Mac. Camping chairs. You got the rocking chair there. Yeah, it's called a pod rocker. It's pretty nice. That's, that we're looks very, back looks very comfortable. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time yeah, to show absolutely. us, you know, your systems and everything you've done. Would you say, you know, obviously you're in construction, and this might not be a fair question to ask you, but um would you say two 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 specific questions one you know what what did you learn from doing the build and two is there like a specific tool that you found the most handy with this builds you know build out well one thing that i did learn 
was that it, it, it was really cool to build something that fit my needs. Right. Like, um, you know, it took me some time after I had decided, okay, something I was going to do. I had some time to think about what did I need, to, how did I need to build it so it could be good for me and, and our situation and what we wanted to do with Your it. Your lifestyle. Right. So, um, that's one takeaway that uh, I have. Uh, as, as far as tools. Yeah, construction, asking a construction guy, like, what's a good tool to have? That's probably really a bad question. But, you know, for this, if it's like saying somebody was just starting out and they didn't, they didn't have any tools, what would be maybe the first tool that you would encourage them to maybe invest in for like a, a custom build with wood? If, if you don't have a, a set of basic tools, I would just buy like a, you know, I just have a really nice set of DeWalt tools that come with a circular saw, a drill, an impact driver, saws all. Um, you, you really don't need that, uh, that many, you know, high-tech tools like I use on a maybe daily basis on a construction site. Uh, just some basic tools can really get you started in building something like this. And uh, I think you covered it. You know, like you said, those that lineup you really can't go wrong because a lot of times people think they have to have like a table saw in order to cut a large sheet of plywood. But the reality is they can have just a regular, you know, circular saw, circular saw with yeah. a track, which you can either make your own track with just a piece of metal or you can buy a track or you can use a piece of wood and you can just run it, you know, down and take a large sheet of plywood and make it smaller. Sure. And then, you know, having the, uh, the impact is lightweight, makes it easy just to be able to put a couple screws in. The drill is good for doing all your drilling. And then the uh, last thing was the reciprocating saw. Is that what that was? Yep. Yep. So, well, excellent. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Are there any um, upgrades that you plan on doing that's like next on the wish list? Yeah, we'd like to refine the door, the back door on this camper. Um, it, it does make the camper kind of sag a little bit because all your weight's on one side. Right. Uh, I don't know if I can overcome that. It's not really a big deal, but um, I, I keep thinking about redoing the back door in, in a different way. and. What's kind of neat about something that you build yourself and you know what, how it goes together is you can kind of always go back and try to refine something that isn't quite right. Um, because you put it together, you can take it apart and, and change it if you like. So it's another yeah. thing to think about if you want to do something. As far as you see yourselves doing another build like this at some point? I think about it. I would really like to do maybe a van someday or, um, or maybe even just a larger camper, I think, probably. But we'll see. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you again. Yeah, Take care. Yep.